What's going on, arcade nerds? I turned on this whole unit from last video, and uh, after a while I noticed there was a, a minor AC hum in the audio, and then the AC hum started getting stronger and stronger, and so I uh, felt around to see if there's anything hot, figuring maybe it was capacitors at first, and I noticed the transformer was smoking hot. So that could be caused by a bad capacitor, or that could be caused by some sort of uh, increased load across this power supply board and so just to just to isolate it and possibly test the transformer on its own I disconnected these these uh, three wires here I disconnected the transformer from this board and noticed that the transformer started buzzing and making all sort of noise so um, <clears throat> it's possible that the increased current load on this Vectrex could have caused this, which I I don't think is I don't think I don't think that's the case. Uh, it is known that these do fail in Vectrexes, and I think that's the situation that I'm in right now. So just for fun, let's go ahead and finish blowing this transformer up. Okay, so clearly we're going to need a replacement for this transformer here. Um, now, the schematics for the Vectrex says that puts out 9 volt, 0 volt, 9 volt AC. But the schematics are actually wrong. Real world voltages measured from a Vectrex transformer are more around 11 volt, 0 volt, 11 volt. Okay. Now, I do happen to have this transformer, which measures... Uh, 12 volt, 0 volt, 12 volt, which is just fine, that's close enough, at 2 amps across the secondary coil. So we have 2 amps. So how do we know if 2 amps at 24 volts, or, you know, at, you know, if 2 amps is enough current? Well, let me, let me explain. It's actually really simple. Let me get this out of the way. And I have a fancy, high-tech, expensive um, marker board here. Okay, so let's make a chart. We'll call this OG, and we'll call this new. I'm referring to the transformer. Now, it doesn't give us much information about the original transformer besides the output voltage and the input current uh, in the Vectrex schematics. But with that information, we can actually calculate uh, uh, if this is a good enough replacement or not. Okay, so the things we know. In the Vectrex schematic, the original transformer is 125 volts, uh, obviously, and the fuse blows at 0.5 amps. Okay, so <clears throat> at absolute maximum, the fuse will blow at this current. Okay, now we can actually put that into Ohm's law and say, E, which is voltage, times I, which is current, equals P, which is wattage. Okay? So, 125, let's do, okay, 125 times 0.5 equals, what is that, 60, 62.5 watts. Okay? I know I have terrible handwriting. Now, that is not the true output wattage of the transformer. Um, there is different efficiency ratings for transformers. So, judging the age of this transformer, I'm going to go with a low efficiency. And we're going to guess and say it's about 85% efficiency. Look at this light. I'm going to shut that light off. Now it's too dark. Okay, I'm going to turn the light back on. Anyways. I'm going to guess it's about 85% efficiency, which would give us 53-ish watts, 
one, two, five watts, okay? So that's the output. So we know our new transformer, the output, the, the current on the output is two amps, and it's uh, 24 volts across the coil. So two amps times 24 volts will equal uh, 48, duh, 48 watts. Okay, so if the normal running current, or normal running wattage, I should say, is 48 watts, and the fuse blows at 53 watts, then we know that this transformer is about the same wattage. So this will be, a, this probably the exact same wattage when it's all said and done. So yes, this will be a good replacement, and I will stick that sucker right there. You know what? I have a couple boxes of these transformers, so I may actually put two together in parallel. Now, <clears throat> let me explain that. For example, let's say we have a transformer that only has two outputs. Okay, uh, two output lugs. Another one has two output lugs. You, you can connect them together to double the wattage or to double your current or whatever, uh, <clears throat> I should say. Now, you can't just do that with any old transformer. You have to have the impedance exactly the same between the two because if you don't, one transformer will fight the other transformer. One transformer will see another transformer as a load. But if both transformers are exactly the same, you can actually connect them together in, in uh, parallel. So I think maybe if I can squeeze them on there, I might run two transformers on this instead. You may say, Jason, if you figured out one of these is adequate, why did you put two on? Well, the reason I wanted to put two on is in case I ever decide to do anything else in the future that draws more current. For example, I might want to drive uh, LEDs off of this same power supply or something like that. Anyway, so I'm going to plug this in. And we're and we are back live. Uh, are you back? Activated. Now, keep in mind the original audio. I'm going to unplug it so I can talk. Now, keep in mind that the original audio amplifier is an LM386, which is, I don't know, what is it, one or two watts or something. Um, and I want to drive, some, I want to have some bass, I want to have some power to this sound. Well, it just so happens. Luckily, I picked up this guy at a flea market still in the package still in the box it's a little 10 inch woofer with a box 20 bucks i couldn't pass it up so i figured let's make an audio amplifier that will really put some boom into this sound here is an amplifier for the woofer that i cobbled together from some random garbage and parts that i found around here um, this is an actual uh, amplifier module. Uh, you can pick these up for like five bucks on eBay. It's uh, 68 watts. Um, <clears throat> here's a heat sink that I took off of something. Here's some leftover parts that was from a homemade uh, um, vector monitor I made. And I actually just cracked the board off just to get to this certain power section so I didn't have to rebuild it again. And here we have two of those same transformers. I have a bunch of them. I have a box full of them. So I figured let's use them up. Um, and what this is doing is I'm having two 12-volt uh, taps, right? I'm connecting the center together. So now I have 0 volts, 24 volts, 24 volts. And it's basically the same thing as what we did earlier, but the earlier was connected this way, but now we're connecting it this way. One's, one's series, one's uh, parallel. And so, um, yeah, that's about it. Oh, I also added a bass boost um, circuit. And you know what? Let me... Uh, let me pull out the dry erase board, and I'll, I'll write out a schematic of how I did this. Okay, this is very, very simplistic. Um, okay, so far we have AC in, right here, and then a ground, right? So, what I've done is used a bridge rectifier. You'll see the circuit very often in electronics which is basically just four diodes arranged so the full wave can be rectified. So here we have positive, 
here we have negative and this ground is right here okay that's stupid reflection here that's a little better anyway so across here we have a capacitor and those are those two large capacitors you've seen across here we have a capacitor what that's going to do is see the, the alternating current is coming in you know like this and when you when you uh, rectify it you're gonna get pulses and this will help smooth the pulses so here we have we still have ground and there's our power now that is connecting directly to our amp all right now the input to the amp we are actually making a circuit it's pretty interesting okay here is from the Vectrex the audio. Okay? Now the audio is going through two 2K resistors. Okay? These are both 2K. And in the center of this 2K, I have a 1 microfarad capacitor. And I'll tell you in a minute how I decided which capacitor I wanted. Okay, and down here I just put a 200 ohm resistor to ground. Okay, now the way this circuit works is uh, this is actually, uh, you know, I, I call this a base boosting circuit, but it's really more of a uh, passive base boosting circuit, if that makes sense. Rather than actually boosting the base, what it's doing is it's only it's 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 coupling this capacitor is coupling higher frequencies and shorting them to ground but lower frequencies this this capacitor is not reacting so lower frequencies can go through and then higher frequencies this capacitor starts to kick in and it, it's actually pretty interesting curve when it works but okay so just to help explain this let me I, you know mm, yeah, this is what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to bring up like an XFC uh, calculator online just to help explain. Okay, so I picked up a capacitive reactance calculator here on the internet. And this one I'm going to do, I'm going to do this to, to emulate the circuit that we built. I'll show you right about there. Okay, right now I'm running one microfarad. Okay. And let's say the frequency is, let's say it's about 100 hertz, which is about the sweet spot of where you want some bass, you know what I mean? Somewhere around there. Now let's calculate that. Okay, now the resistance across that capacitor is 1.5 kilo ohms, okay? Now let's say we, we had a frequency of 1 kilohertz, okay? That's 10 times higher than what the, what's, what's a desirable uh, frequency. Now if I were to calculate that, now we have 159 ohms. That's a drastic difference. And so what's happening is, the higher the frequency is, the more the capacitor wants to short it out. So let's try 10 kilo ohms. Boom! That's where we're at, 15 ohms. That's really shorting it out. And we can go right back to around the sweet spot. Let's just go, so let's say 60 ohms or something like that. And wow, look how high the resistance is. So that's, that's, you know, hey, the simplest way to describe capacitive reactants. But that's how the base booster circuit works. Okay, so let's test this out. Now keep in mind that I have the base booster circuit uh, hooked up. So um, there, is, there is no highs. Well, there is some highs, but we have filtered as much of those highs out as we can. So I'm going to go ahead and plug the Vectrex in and we'll hear what it sounds like. Clips. 
circuit truly is working. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run a jumper across here, say here. I'll be right back. So I'm going to uh, um, rig this somewhere in the bottom of the cabinet. I just want the cabinet to be just crazy booming bass. I know it's weird. I just want, I just, that's just what I want. So yeah, I guess that's about it for the audio. I think it's about time to put this in the cabinet because after this point here, uh, if, I, if I want to continue messing around with the vector monitor built into the marquee, I could just at this point just pull out SD cards and, and update as necessary. Okay, I think I'm getting carried away now, but um, <clears throat> I added I added lights that go with the music, and let me show you this simple simple circuit that I did to do that. Right here, you have the wires that go to your speaker. Okay, there's your my terrible drawing of the speaker. Okay, now um, what I've done is I've tapped into those wires. One of those is a ground, okay? <clears throat> and uh, what I've done is I put a diode here to rectify half the wave. And then I put a capacitor here to keep a little bit of a charge. That's going to ground. Oops, there we go. And I can you see? And then I added a 78 12 12 volt voltage regulator and then this goes to the oh my terrible drawing this goes to the L E D strip so anyways let's uh let's take a look and see what that looks like Okay, I have this LED strip strung all over the place here. And uh, you keep in mind that uh, this circuit is designed to hit, most, most of the time will hit when the bass is active, if that makes sense. So let me uh, plug this in, let's see what this looks like. Atari Fox. Fox activated. Yeah, I guess I'll just find some place to put LEDs on the Berserk cabinet, possibly under the control panel or something like that. We are back behind the Berserk cabinet, and I've brought the cabinet into my house now. Uh, so, as you can see, we've put the woofer down at the bottom there. And on this side right here, you can see the uh, electronics 
and uh, I put two screw holes in, one there and one there. And there's two more screws holding in the uh, the the box. Now I'm not a fan of putting screw holes in things when it's not supposed to be there, but you know what? This is my one exception, I guess. So let me show you the front of the cabinet. I'm gonna go. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and push this back, and I'll show you the front. Well, before we actually plug this in and play the game, I want to make sure the colors are correct. So we're going to calibrate the color board, and to do that. I'm going to use this color calibration cartridge. Box activated. Okay, now in this cartridge, you can see see these lines? This is one single vector, and what we need to make sure is we have magenta, white, cyan, green, yellow, red, and blue directly in the middle of these color sections. And we do, so it's actually it's good right off the bat. Now, the reason you need a calibration cartridge at all is because uh, we are measuring, we're converting an analog signal into specific colors. And analog signals can vary from machine to machine, especially after I hack the living hell out of this. Who knows what's how, how original, original the signal is anymore. But, yeah, so let's go ahead and let's, let's play the game. Okay, in a minute here, I'm going to have Kelly plug this in, and I want to show you the startup sequence uh, as this boots up. Okay, go ahead, go ahead and plug it in, Kelly. Atari Fox. Fox activated. Get the tripod set up and let's uh, start this up. Okay, let me see if I can get the best focus as possible here. I know this is difficult to get a focus on a vector monitor. This looks pretty decent. Hmm. Let me move the camera a bit. We'll do. Real chicken. Fight like a girl nut. That's better. The bass is crazy. It shakes your chest. Put that chicken. The intruder must not escape. Oh, I'm looking at the camera screen again. That's on me. Chicken, fight like a girl or not. Every time it speaks, the lights light up. On me. 
can fight like a grown up charge. Charge. <clears throat> Chicken fight like a grown up. <laughs> Chicken, fight like a grown up. Destroyed that chicken, chicken, fight like a grown up. Chicken, fight like a grown up. I don't even hear that bass. That's crazy. The bass is nuts. Your memory must not escape. Your memory must leave. Auto like jumped right out of there. Okay. Anyways, that was a crappy game, but you get the idea. Pretty cool, right? I like the bass on this thing. It like, I don't know, I don't know how to describe it. It just shakes your chest and, I don't know, feels kind of cool. Well, I guess that's it. Um, thanks for watching this. I mean, I mean, there is going to be some more polish that I'll do to this. Like, I need to get like a nice piece of glass instead of the scratched up plexi that I have for top and bottom marquee and the bezel. But I guess that's it. This is where I'm going to cut it, cut it off and say the, say the machine is done. Uh, so yeah. Anyways, have a good one, guys. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And uh, have a good one.